of God at this Mass. Let us all rejoice in the Lord as we celebrate the feast day in honor of the Virgin Mary, at whose assumption the angels rejoice and praise the Son of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends in Christ, the church today celebrates the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, not her ascension, not her resurrection, but assumption into heaven. So we pray today for the grace to live holy lives, the grace to be of good support to one another. For the many times we have not lived our lives as faithful Christians, let us be truly sorry for this moment and ask the Lord for mercy and for pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us and forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting love.
late osprey. Almighty ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. The sanctuary of God in heaven opened and the Ark of the Covenant could be seen inside it. Now a great sign appeared in heaven. A woman adorned with the sun, standing on the moon and with the twelve stars on her head for a crown. She was pregnant and in labor, crying aloud in the pangs of childbirth. Then a second sign appeared in the sky, a huge red dragon which had seven heads and ten horns, and each of the seven heads crowned with a coronet. Its tail dragged a third of the stars from the sky and dropped them on the earth. And the dragon stopped in front of the woman as she was having the child so that he could eat it as soon as it was born from its mother. The woman brought a male child into the world, the son who was to rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And the child was taken straight up to God and to his throne, while the woman escaped into the desert, where God had made a place of safety ready. Then I heard a voice from heaven, Victory and power and empire forever have been won by our God and all authority for his Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruit of all who have fallen asleep. Death came through one man, and in the same way, the resurrection of the dead has come through one man. Just as all men die in Adam, so all men will be brought to life in Christ. But all of them in their proper order, Christ as the first fruit, and then after the coming of Christ, those who belong to him. After that will come the end when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, having done away with everything, every sovereignty, authority, and power. For he must be king until he has put all his enemies under his feet, and the last of the enemies to be destroyed is death. For everything is to be put under his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Luke, Jesus Christ. Mary set out and went as quickly as she could to a town in the hill country of Judah. She went into Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now, as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, Of all women, you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honored with a visit from the mother of my Lord. For the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Yes, blessed is she who believed that the promise met her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord and my spirit exalts in God my Savior, because he has looked upon his lowly handmaid. Yes, from this day forward, all generations will call me blessed, for the Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name, and his mercy reaches from age to age for those who fear him. He has shown the power of his arm. He has routed the proud of heart. He has pulled down princes from their thrones and exalted the lowly. The hungry he has filled with good things. The rich sent away empty. He has come to the help of Israel, his servant, mindful of his mercy. According to the promise, he made to our ancestors, of his mercy to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months 
and then went back home. The Gospel of the Lord. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. Thou reign now in heaven with Jesus our King. Ave, 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 Ave Maria. Ave. be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Honor to Mary and Joseph. Dear friends in Christ, today we celebrate one of the four dogmas, four Marian dogmas of the Church, namely the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And these four dogmas are, first, Mary, the mother of God, the second, Mary, the, the immaculate conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary, third, the perpetual virginity of Mary, and fourth, the glorious assumption of Mary. Now, dear friends in Christ, for us to understand the solemnity we celebrate today and appreciate it, it is also important for us to bear in mind that the divine revelation, which is a source of our faith, comes to us or is made known public through three sources, namely the sacred scripture, that is the Bible, the tradition of the church as handed on to us by the apostles, and third, the magisterium of the church, the teachings and the councils of the church. The dogma of Mary, the mother of God, was publicly and universally accepted by the church in the year 431 AD at the Council of Ephesus. That is the first of these four Marian, Marian dogmas. This dogma refutes the error that says that Mary is only or merely the mother of Jesus in his human nature and not Jesus in his divine nature. And unfortunately, we still have these heresies amongst us today. And this heresy is called Nestorianism, stressing that there is an independence in the divine and human natures of Jesus Christ. And if we hold on to this heresy, it will therefore put a question to our salvation, our redemption. It means that we are still not yet redeemed. As Saint Anselm will teach us, that through the effect of sin, when man sinned, when Adam and Eve sinned, man needed to repair what they had damaged. But man could not. Man needed to repair the effects of sin. But man could not. Only God can. And God would not. He would not. Because he isn't man. But out of his love for us, God chose to become one of us, to become man. So in Jesus Christ, he is truly God and truly man. Truly God and truly man. There was never a point in time where his human nature 
was different or separated from his divine nature. He was one as man and as God. One in all things like us, but sin. And so the second dogma, which is the Immaculate Conception, affirms that at the time of Mary's conception, she was without any form of actual or original sin. And this dogma became, this doctrine became a dogma in 1854 by Pope Pius IX. The third dogma is a perpetual virginity of Mary, which means that Mary was a virgin before, during, and after giving birth to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is scriptural. So there is no debate about this amongst Christians. The fourth doctrine and dogma is what we celebrate today, the Assumption. Here we believe that free from original sin, Mary was assumed into heaven, body and soul. Praise the Lord. Amen. This solemnity, dear friends, is not to be understood that Mary resurrected, no. It is not to be understood that Mary ascended into heaven, no. But that Mary, who is full of grace and without sin, obedient to the Father and faithful in following her son, Jesus Christ, was taken up to heaven, body and soul, having completed the course of her earthly life. Again, this dogma was defined by the church in 1950 by Pope Pius XII. Glory to Jesus. So it is not recorded anywhere in the scriptures when, where, and how Mary died. Neither did the scripture tell us anything about her assumption. However, this celebration and other Marian dogmas have been part of our ancient tradition, the ancient tradition of the church. And so we see that following the three sources of divine revelation to us, some comes to us through the scriptures, others as handed on to us from the apostles and defined, interpreted through the dogmatic teachings of the church, which comes to us through the various councils that we have. The assumption of Mary, their brothers and sisters, assures us that all who die in Christ Jesus, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep, will be raised from the dead. And this we find in our second reading from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 20 to 26. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruit of all who have fallen asleep. Mary died not because she died in sin, but her death was a victory like her divine son's death, a victory over sin and death. To all, to all Christians, all men and people of goodwill who live their lives according to the laws, according to the teachings of the church, according to the scriptures, will all be raised to life eternal. And so, dear friends in Christ, the question we should all ask ourselves today as we celebrate this Dogma, the solemnity, is this. Am I ready? Do I know the day, the hour, the moment when the Lord will call me? And if he does, will I be with him in eternity? We're told that Mary was obedient to the Father. When the angel came to her, innocent young lady, 
Mary did not go questioning. She simply said, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your will. Faith in God. We all have been, have been called daily in our places of work, in our families, homes, schools, wherever we find ourselves, in our situations. Do we all say like Mary, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Although I cannot understand what is happening, although I do not know the future, but I trust in God and I'm, I am saying, do unto me according to your will. We have something here to learn from Mary. Mary was conceived without original sin, yet she was given the choice to sin or not, and she remained without sin. Each day, we are all given choices to make. In our choices, what kind of choice do we make? Do we give excuses for our sins? Are we sources of temptation to others or to ourselves? Mary followed her son faithfully through his passion, death, and resurrection. Are we ready, willing to follow Jesus, the one who has called us faithfully through his passion, death, and resurrection? Do we give up at certain points in time to say, oh, you know what? I am tired. Mary was never tired. All through her son carrying the cross, going through the torture, she was with her son. At the foot of the cross, Mary remained faithful, remained with her son. When the tomb was open, Mary was also there. And she was there with the apostles at the beginning of the church. Again, we learn from our gospel reading. Mary was not told by the angel to go visit Elizabeth. Elizabeth did not invite Mary. But upon hearing the good news, Mary decided to share in the joy of her cousin. Dear friends in Christ, are we sources of joy to others? Do we share in the joys of others? Or do we envy them? Elizabeth said to Mary, Why should the mother of my Lord and Savior come to me? In other words, I should be the woman who should come to you, Mary. Mary did not allow herself to be consumed with pride. No. Imagine you being the mother of the president. Mary was not just the mother of a president, not the mother of an emperor, but the mother of God. Yet, she humbled herself to visit, to walk miles, day and night, only to visit her cousin, and to remain with her for three months, helping with her shows, showing love, Dear friends in Christ, today we are all called to emulate the virtues of Mary, to live without sin, to make the right choices, to be sources of love, sources of happiness to others. We pray today, dear friends in Christ, that the Lord will continue to help us as we continue to have faith in God, to believe in Him, to make the right choices, choices in our daily work, in our families, choices in our relationship, and in all that we do through Christ our Lord.
raised up into heaven, body and soul to glory, Mary shines forth as a great sign of our eternal future as the church. But we are still pilgrims as we bring our prayers with her to God our Father. the church that we will look forward to the resurrection promised us by Christ. We pray, O Lord. Hear our humble prayer, mercy on your people, Lord. For world leaders, that they will keep the peace and avert a war of total destruction. We pray, O oh Lord. Ye are humble, pray, O oh, mercy on your people, For devotion to Mary, that Christians may find unity around the lowly handmaid, exalted to glory. We pray, O oh Lord. Ye are humble, For our families, that the gentle queen of peace may reign in every home, and for our private intentions, let us talk to the Lord in the silence of our hearts. We pray, O Lord. Nigeria in distress. All-powerful and merciful Father, you are the God of justice, love, and peace. You rule over all the nations of the earth. Power and might are in your hands, and no one can withstand you. We present our country, Nigeria, before you. We praise and thank you, for you are the source of all we have and are. We are sorry for all the sins we have committed and for the good deeds we have failed to do. In your loving forgiveness, keep us safe from the punishments we deserve. Lord, we are weighed down not only by uncertainties, but also by moral, economic and political problems. Listen to the cries of your people who confidently turn to you. God of infinite goodness, our strength in adversity, our health in weakness, our comfort in sorrow. Be merciful to us, your people. Spare this nation, Nigeria, from chaos, anarchy, and doom. Bless us with your kingdom of justice, love, and peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lady Queen of Nigeria, pray, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Lord of heaven and earth, our prayers come before you with the help of the glorious ever Virgin Mary, the first believer called to share in the glory of your triumphant Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Give 
pray, dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you have assumed into heaven, may our hearts, aflamed with the fire of love, constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them all to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For today the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven. As the beginning and image of your church is coming to perfection, and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people, rightly you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvelously brought forth your, immac your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. We celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Dominic, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfilling help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servants Francis, our Pope, and Alfred Martins, our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance into your kingdom there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin 
and save from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Prayer for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. O God, our help in ages past, we, your children, humbly implore your mercy at this time of adversity. We are devastated by the coronavirus pandemic that is ravaging the whole world, snuffing life out of your people and spreading fear everywhere. You are the God of life and nothing is impossible to you. 
you ask us to call on you in the day of trouble, and you will answer us. We know that we are sinners who are unworthy of your favors. Although we have no merits of our own to plead before you, we stand on the merits and death and resurrection of Christ and plead his saving blood over our lives and situation. We ask you to be merciful to us and save us from this scourge that is devastating the world. Be gracious to us and speak life and healing into the present coronavirus scourge and command it to depart from our world. Give leaders of government and scientists divine wisdom and knowledge to take the right decisions and to discover the medication needed to cure people who are infected with this virus. Protect all health workers and volunteers. Look with pity on those who are already infected with this deadly virus and heal them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died from it and comfort those they left behind to mourn their demise. Lord, through this scourge, may the hearts of many be turned back to you, their Creator. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lady Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. All angels and saints of God, pray for us. May Our Lady, Mother of the Church, Health of the sick intercede for the whole world. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Honor to Mary and Joseph. I wish to thank you all, the, function, the liturgical functionaries, for being part of this Mass and making it a success. That's all who follow us at home may have the opportunity of having Mass on this day of obligation. We also say a very big thank you to the staff and management of R2 TV on channel 112 on Go TV. We pray that the good Lord and our mother Mary will constantly intercede for you and the Lord will bless you abundantly through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almost every day, hardly will a week pass by without priests going out to administer communion or anointing of the sick to people, parishioners, Catholics who are bedridden. And through this medium, many have the opportunity of having masses from their sick bed. We pray that as you carry out this apostolate, the Lord will bless and expand that which he has sent for you through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I ask you all watching us from home to please when you pray, say one our Father, one Hail Mary, and one glory be to the Father for the staff and management of R2 TV. And the good Lord will bless you too through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The gospel of the Lord. And